I am Dr. Edie Witter, and this is a Kilroy Academy virtual field trip on the Kissimmee River. Today we're taking an airboat ride on the Kissimmee River. Not just because airboats are cool, which they definitely are, but because the story of the Kissimmee River is such an important one in terms of explaining why it's vital that we understand aquatic ecosystems and work with them instead of against them. This is a story about a huge engineering mistake that was made because people didn't understand how Florida's aquatic ecosystems work. Florida's ecology is all about water. If you think of water as being like the state's circulatory system, then this river is its main artery, draining into what is the liquid heart of Florida, which is Lake Okeechobee. Water from the Chain of Lakes region just south of Orlando is carried by the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee. Originally, the Kissimmee was a winding, twisting snake of a river that carried water slowly, ever so slowly, to the lake. The river would periodically spill over its banks, creating what was described as a fast food factory for the local wildlife. This was a wetland paradise where early explorers described myriad birds that blanketed the landscape. Ibis, herons, storks, and egrets that were once so abundant that when they took flight they would block out the sun. And below the waterline there was equally abundant wildlife, including enormous numbers of sport fish, alligators, turtles, water snakes, and crustaceans. But Florida residents viewed the water as an enemy that needed to be beaten into submission rather than a source of abundant life. They wanted to be able to use this land for growing crops and grazing cattle. To them, this waterlogged ecosystem appeared useless. As a result, in order to dry out the land surrounding the river and make it accessible for agriculture, a plan was devised to deepen and straighten the river. This channelization, as it was called, was a major engineering feat which took 10 years to complete and cost $28 million. But even before it was completed, in 1971, people began to realize they'd made a terrible mistake. Waters that had once run clear and slow and supported all manner of wildlife above and below the waterline now ran dark and dirty and the wildlife was decimated. 92% of the migratory bird population disappeared, along with 74% of the bald eagle population. When all is said and done, the price tag for the repair of this mistake is going to cost over half a billion dollars. In this part of the river, the floodplain has been reflooded, and these wetland plants are improving the water quality. Wading birds, shorebirds, and game fish, and other wildlife are beginning to return. But the reconstruction still has a long way to go, and it can never be put back the way it was. To avoid such costly engineering mistakes in the future, we need to train engineers that know how to work with nature instead of against it. And the first principle should be to do no harm. Or, as the famous conservationist Aldo Leopold put it, to keep every cog and wheel is the first precaution of intelligent tinkering. <laughs>